Hi, Steve here from photomasteryclub.com and in this Photoshop tutorial I'm going to show you how you can really make your colors pop uh, in Photoshop. So I'm going to use two different examples. One is when you've got an image like this where you've got a really beautiful sunset or sunrise with lots of colors already in the image and you really just want to make them stand out. And the next example is with an image where, for example, we're shooting in the daytime and you haven't got all of these beautiful sunrise or sunset colors. So yeah, I'm going to show you how to really make these colors pop in both examples. But before I show you the techniques, if you'd like to learn our full end-to-end -end Photoshop workflow, which is a six stage process, so that you can process your images with real consistency every time and get great results, then just click the link below this video now and you'll be able to go and download that PDF for free. Otherwise, you can just wait till the end of the video and do it then. But for now, let's uh, let's crack on with the tutorials. So yeah, the first example I'm gonna show you is uh, with a shot like this. So this image is quite flat. You can see there's lots of nice colors in the image, but they don't really pop at the moment. Now, the most important thing to realize when trying to make your colors pop like this is that we're not going to be directly increasing saturation so it might be tempting you know to uh, to try and use a uh, hue saturation layer and boost the saturation here like this now you know you can do that a little bit but it gets to a point where you know even though we're really saturating the colors not much else is changing and it just looks over the top so you know you don't want to do that you don't want to use hue and saturation the best way that I've found to actually make colors really stand out is to add contrast and you can do that either using levels or curves adjustment and uh, I'll show you both ways so first let's start off with the levels adjustment what you can do is just take I mean mainly we're working with these two control points here the midpoint and the uh, white point control points and what you want to do is just slide them towards each other now there's going to be some trial and error here, but you know every image is going to require a different amount of uh, movement on these control points. But what you can do is just gradually move these points towards each other. So this midpoint, as you move it up, the image gets darker. As you move the white point, it gets brighter. And really, you just want to play with those two control points until. The, uh, you know you get the desired effect and if I just show you now the difference between the before and after there then you'll see the colors in the sky really standing out now the thing to make uh, to you know to not forget is that whilst doing this other parts of the shot are gonna start to look a bit wrong um, so for example the shadows here we're losing the detail in those uh, darkest parts of the mountains so we are going to need to do some layer masking to just apply this effect only in the area where we want it. So to do that, if you click on the layer mask of your levels adjustment, you can invert the mask by pressing Command or Control I, and that will hide this adjustment completely. Now if we take the brush tool with a white foreground color, and let's put the opacity up to around about 80% or so, then you can just brush into the parts of the image where you want this color boosting effect to be applied. So really just in the clouds and in the water here where they're reflecting. And now we can see the, uh, you know, the effect that that's had. And you know, the, another thing to remember is that you don't wanna do like too much of this effect all at once um, because it can get a bit heavy handed. So my advice is rather than just try to do one adjustment with a real big color boost instead of doing that just do multiple smaller adjustments because it's a much more subtle way of uh, of doing it so if I just add another one there we can see you know that's really starting to have quite a nice effect the alternative method to using the levels is to use a curves adjustment now both methods are actually uh, pretty much doing the same thing but it just yeah, you know, the way they, uh, the way you control them, and the way that they uh, apply the contrast is a little bit different. So, you know, just try both and see which one you prefer using. I'll just show you the curves uh, method here. Yeah, you, know, you can just use a simple S curve adjustment to do this. So you can 
click on the curve there and push it up and then click further down on the curve and drag it downwards and as we push this top half of the curve up and the bottom half of the curve down we can see that we've got the contrast being applied there and we've got the same issue here with the shadows going too dark so you know after you've made this adjustment you'll want to mask the uh, the shadows back in or uh, or hide the whole layer and mask the sky and uh, and the foreground in but that is uh, you know that is really the secret if there was one to making your colors real really pop in photoshop uh, and that you know when you boil it down it's to add contrast rather than trying to actually add color and so that really covers uh, you know having an image that has already got some nice color in it and you really want to make it pop I'll just show you this uh, next example here where we've got an image that was taken in the daytime and because it was quite bright the colors are quite washed out and also we haven't got any of that nice sunrise or sunset color in the sky so this is a bit more tricky to kind of work with and make these colors really stand out and look good so what we'll do for a scenario like this we'll add one extra step in before we uh, add any contrast and contrary to what I said a minute ago about using the hue saturation layer what we'll do on a shot like this is actually use the hue saturation layer to begin with just to give us a little bit of a head start uh, to give us some color to work with now you will usually want to avoid uh, just using the saturation slider just on the master uh, option here in the drop down so if I do that you know we'll you know, move the saturation slider up and it it's basically increasing the saturation across all of the colors evenly but we don't want to do that we want to use a bit more of a granular method uh, a bit more of an accurate sort of way of doing this so let's just reset the saturation there and what you want to do is just pick a color pick an individual color to work on at a time so I'll pick yellows first and the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to boost the foreground here which is mostly made of greens and yellows and a bit of brown now it's a bit counterintuitive but it turns out with grass uh, like this then by affecting the yellows you're actually going to get a really nice uh, increase in saturation rather than affecting the greens or rather than just adjusting the greens specifically so I've got the yellow selected I'll just boost the saturation slider now and as I move that up we can see we're getting some nice color in the uh, in the foreground now so if I just disable and re-enable re that we can see the difference that's making and you know if we want we can then do the same thing for the sky uh, so let's choose the blues here and you know we might not want to add too much to the sky I mean we can but it's again looking a bit dodgy if we start doing too much so let's just give it a little bit and look at the effect of that and so now yeah we've added a bit of saturation in there I wouldn't say the colors are really popping yet so now that we've done this pre-contrast adjustment we can now go ahead and add the contrast in let's just use a curves adjustment this time uh, we can start adding the contrast to the image just like we did in the previous example and as I do that you'll really start to see these colors uh, uh, beginning to pop and you know it's it's as much the contrast that's having that effect as it is with the actual color so there we go now what we'll also want to do here because we've got some dark shadows in this building we can we can actually mask that out uh, yeah we can mask this contrast adjustment out here and just recover some of those shadows kind of like what we did in the previous example where we were masking in and out using the uh, using the layer mask of the adjustment layer that we've just added so you know you'll want to combine these techniques with some layer masking techniques just to make sure that the effect is only being applied where you want it but really that is uh, yeah that is the the secret to making your colors pop in Photoshop and that is to uh, you know when you when you've got an image that's already got lots of nice color in it start adding contrast by way of the curves and or levels adjustment layers or if you've got like a washed out daytime image like this then 
do the same thing, but first add a hue saturation layer, which you know just seeds the image with with a bit extra color, that this contrast can then really boost. And so that wraps this tutorial up. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you, uh, yeah, like I said at the start of the video, if you want to go and download our free six stage workflow PDF, then you can just click the link that's below this video and I'll send it right over to you.